Time of the year, mayfly are extremely prevalent and besides for seeing your normal canis plumes which look like smoke on the side of the dam, which obviously this is not that imitation, it's a lot bigger, um, there are a lot of mayfly um, and at the moment we're finding a hell of a lot of dark olive mayfly and they are about size 16, size 18, so that's actually a decent size insect. Okay, so this is the <coughs> my preferred hook. I'm a big Hanak fan. They, they're extremely sharp hooks. Obviously, most modern hooks are chemically sharp. These are barbless. They have a long barb, and you don't generally lose too many fish on the barb. You do pay a bit of a premium, they're about 85 bucks a box in comparison to others where you're going to pay 45, 50 bucks a box. But the hook is, and you'll see if you pass around, it's a, it's a magnificent hook. And the, the point hardly ever bends down. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you can see this hook quite clearly. It's not that clear. What I like about this clinky hook is that it's actually, it's got divisions in it. Uh, the it rounds and then it's got uh, um, different sections. So it gives you quite a nice idea and you can consistently tie to the same areas of the hook. Is when I had posted this initially, how it floats, because one of the big things with emerges is that people underdress the fly. If you, Hans von Klinken writes about his Klinkhammer and the main feature to it is that the post holds that whole fly up. Not the hackle, the post. So you have to have a post that floats and it has to be large. I'm using sheer 40 no, so it's it's really fine cotton and that obviously the finer the cotton the better we're gonna add a tiny little red tag one down one back and then we're gonna whip finish it off Rather underdo the, 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 the main body of the fly than overdo it and then leave yourself very little at the top. And by, the first thing we do then is plan it by starting your thread where you want the thorax to start. So straight away you've, you've planned where the thorax is going to be. We're going to go back about halfway over the red. <coughs> okay, these are the Spirit River Fibets or Fibbets or whatever. Micro Fibbets. They're uh, synthetic uh, fibers. They're really thin. They're very strong. You know, it's, they're very strong. I mean, being synthetic, they don't break at all. The tail on mayflies is generally about three quarters the length of the body of the, of the fly, not longer than that. And three, I like three, but it's also quite debatable. I think. <laughs> okay, trap that on the top and then just to ensure that you've got a bit more strength you can wrap it in right to the top okay mayflies do have a a fair sort of taper it's not a big taper but they do get slightly bigger towards the, the thorax so you can build up a little taper and try and keep the, the thread wrapped if possible 
But if you feel your fly, it actually feels serrated. It's got it's got little teeth like a like a screw would have. And I'll show you why when we when we put these coils on. Can you go back just above the, the tail again? And we're gonna tie in the the coils. Okay, they start. It's obviously once again it's the same as if you look at a peacock feather, it's fat at the bottom and it's got a taper that goes nice and skinny towards the end which is perfect for what we're trying to tie. So we want to start with a skinny end at the bottom obviously then assisting in our with the, with the thicker sections assisting in us getting our own taper towards the head. You've got to actually handle them very carefully. They they break for free. So you get the actually six dollars. The ribbing portion started by <laughs> by starting at a forty five degree angle, pointing That's about away two from. Two rands worth you there, Lily. Yeah. Take your thread back up to the top of the thorax. I do suggest using uh, hacker pliers because your fingers, or if you've got fingers like mine. You know, they don't work so lacquer on these tiny things. And then nice tight, tight wraps. Like I said, it is very brittle, so you've got to learn. It takes a while to get used to what sort of uh, pressure you can put on. Yeah, you want to put as much as possible but without, without breaking it. So you're not overlapping your turns slightly. there? Slightly. Slightly, okay. if quite predominantly. One of the secrets to this Polish quill, because it's so fragile, is when you're trying to whip it or finish it off or tie it in, You've got to be really gentle and then just gradually start getting tension. a bit more tension on each wrap. Otherwise it just splays that last little section and yeah, it's, it's irreparable from there. Okay, you're going to cut the little tag off. And, get in there. and then whip finish. Right, the next step is, there's two reasons for using UV. The first one is to protect the quill because it's, as I've said multiple times, it is brittle. And a cockfish, after one fish, would annihilate it. So all you're wanting is a light coating, one to protect it, and two to give it that insect looking <coughs> bit of luff. Bit of gloss. Bit of gloss, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that it's cured, You'll see it's got a nice gleam to it. It's looking quite buggy. Okay, we reattach the thread. We're now going to build up the thorax and the wing case. Okay, so Tony, Tony's bought uh, Mark Perejean's fancy tools. So he he can probably do. What I'm trying to do in about 10 seconds, and it takes me quite a while. But none of, I'm sure quite a few of us don't have the tool, so. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is, for the white wing casing, I'm trying to find three feathers that sort of match each other, as closely as possible. You lie them all on top of each other, concave facing down. Drop your hand, Joy. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. Gently tease them all so they're all sitting straight up. Okay. These are extremely expensive uh, fly tying clips. They come from Waltons. They cost 24 bucks and I think you get about 100 of them. You do need two of these. Okay, I'm going to show you why. I can't show you how I'm going to do this because I do it on my leg. But I'll explain. 
So you put them on your leg, obviously you can't go facing down, so it sits on your leg. Hey? <laughs> okay, can you see that? No, 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 sit down, we'll get around. Can you see it on my leg? Yeah. yeah. Right, so from there, from there, you simply pinch the back with your finger, open the clip, and push down vigorously. <laughs> okay. So that's what happens. You catch all the main sections of the, of the feather inside the clip. And from there you can simply tease by slightly opening it up enough to let the fibers loose but not, not the actual main feather itself. Okay, so that's what you're trying to achieve. Okay. Alright. From there, okay. Okay. <laughs> and you can keep fiddling with it because it's nice. You watch the same YouTube videos. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. You take the second clip and you slide it over those fibers that you've now trapped. Give yourself quite a bit of space so that that's your effect. Okay. Now don't cut the wrong end off. You want to cut the end nearest to the, the stem of the feather as closely as possible. Now you've got to think of how you're going to tie the puff in. So if you looked at the fly, the puff is facing forward. So we're going to tie it backwards and then we're going to flip it over the top of the thorax. Okay, so that's what you need to be thinking about now. The loose fibers on this end, so we're going to grab it like that and simply trap them together as best as possible so that you don't have different length fibers. Okay, are you in a, a nice pin trap? No, he's going to pull the fiber. Okay. And then you want to pull it towards your the back end of the fly, like that. Oh, that was close. Okay, so that's what you're trying to achieve. These feathers, obviously there's a hell of a lot of them, creates a serious amount of bulk, which you don't want, especially in, in smaller flies. So how to get rid of that is if you cut, without touching these, at an angle, it, it allows them to lie flat, because the worst thing is with all that bulk, it just starts slipping off. I was hoping this would go perfectly. Alright, for those of you that haven't used dubbing loops before, um, I like using dubbing loops, especially recently. Your, your dubbing stays on the fly for a lot longer, even if you tease it out, because it's trapped into the fibers. Um, after multiple fish, there's still those little spiky sections that you teased out that you were so pleased about are still there. You don't want to do a huge loop, the medium one's fine. And bring the cotton back to the top. Hmm. You twist it to create tension at the top, like that, which you can wind down as far as possible. And then you twist again from the bottom around your finger. Okay, there's your loop. Put your feathers in. And then when you're happy with where they are, release it and let the, the weight drop and form the tension. So you'll see it's actually grabbed it. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Mm. You can then drag it if you want to, depending on how much you want to leave on the outside. Okay. Mm. Let me see if I can show you. Can you see it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so when I spin it now, you'll see what happens to the fibers. 
it basically forms a brush and a lava brush. Now we're trying to form wings on top of the fly. So while tying it, you want to be teasing all these fibers upward. You don't want them to be facing down. That's, not, that's defeating the point of, of the wing. Okay, so that's my first, my first wrap. Okay, so you want to hold it up like that, trap it once behind, once in front, and once behind again. You don't really have to worry about it after that. The loop's never going to come out. So it looks pretty messy, which is fine. Buggy. It's buggy for now. So what we do is we take take your scissors, and we're then going to tease from the top. We're going to tease and part like a 1990s middle path. Okay, so what I've, what I've forgotten to mention first is we want to make the wings the same length. Pull everything up. Obviously not much your wing case in the white. And trim them off at the same length. <coughs> so then when you do split them, they'll be they'll be equal length from the hook leg. Yeah. Alright, your your wing case, which we're now gonna form a nice bubble. Make sure that your cotton is not right at the front. Your cotton must be as far back as possible without trapping trapping the wings. If you wet your fingers slightly, you can gather it a little easier. Okay, so you bring that over the top, like that, with a very loose wrap to start, and then just push backwards slightly. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So, that's how it was. And then just pushing back, you can create a depends on what size bubble you want. There's a, a nice pronounced one. And trust me, if I can tie this fly with these fingers, anybody can tie this fly. Split the fingers, which is the eyes. The then you want to go in front of your your wing case, this is basically a sighter, that's its only purpose <coughs> and perhaps it might look like wing, a wing that's come out or maybe a bit of a multi-purpose but great for all men, great for all men, you can see this thing from a mile away and you can tie, I mean your wing case you could probably tie it with anything because it's above the water, if you want to tie it in bright orange, tie it in bright orange. When tying in the front of it, you want to tie as close to it as possible to keep it away from the, the eye of the hook. And you want to tease your wings back forward. Good. And if you are OCD with the tire, you can get rid of the short white fibers at the back. If you saw that, uh, that initial picture that Graham <coughs> passed around, you'll see that Mayfly actually has little legs coming out. So you can, if you want to, you can leave the bottom. You can leave those little pieces of uh, CVC that are sticking down. Or if you want the fly to sit flush with the, with the abdomen in the water, you can just trim off. <coughs> the bottom fibers that are pointing the wrong direction. And the little tail fibers, if you're particular about that, so this one's got four. 
do you split them? You can split them wider if you, if you so feel. 